Hey everybody, I'm actually doing this video today, uh, not going to be a funny one, it's going to be more of a serious one, in regards to a lot of questions people ask me, a lot of things that I see on the internet, um, when it pertains to sports betting. And um, for, for guys that have watched me in the past and rant, how, how I get crazy about that two units, five units, five star, three star kind of nonsense, it does bother me uh, because I'm doing this too long to know that um, it's it, it's it's not the way to make money. I'm not saying what I do makes everybody money. I'm not saying that at all. Um, what what I'm trying to say is there's terms that are out there, and I, and I read this a lot. I uh, I lost the game, but I beat the market. I don't get that. When you beat the market, well, I got the best number. You know, the line was seven. Uh, I bet it over in baseball, uh, but I got it at six and a half. It doesn't matter. The game was fourteen twelve. I, I still got the best number. I read the game right, and if that guy don't make the error, it's not a twelve run inning. It's in, in the end, it comes down to wins and losses. I mean, all the information that is out there anybody can get this is a this is a business in sports betting where it's 50 percent feel and 50 percent you doing your homework um the the people that are on forums that that I, they want to bet each other uh touts uh they're on the right side. If you follow this long term, if you play my 10 stars, there's so many spins to, to this bullshit that, um, you know, it, it has people crazy. My, my dad was a bookmaker for his whole life. I mean, at, you know, at six years old, I was figuring out what parlays paid, okay? I, I've been on both ends of this counter. I, I know how it works. My father always told me, uh, and other people in this industry have told me, you can book with no juice and make money because the better will bury himself it's human nature everybody has gamble in them so you know the guy that bets a hundred bucks a game right you know betting a hundred two hundred and he's winning what does everybody say well I'm betting 500 this week playing with the man's money playing with the books money I always said wait if you won the money isn't it your money how the fuck is it the books money you want it, it's your money. So you, you go a couple of weeks playing your normal bets, 100, 200, whatever the case is, and now you start climbing the ladder, feeling good, you feel your oats, and you're betting out of character. You're betting more. Well, that law of average is going to catch up to you sooner or later. You know, for every good streak, there's a bad streak. So you can win 56% of your games, 60% of your games, and be broke in a month if you're betting wrong. If you're betting the same amount of money in every game, you're, you're making money. I, I did this exercise, uh, I did this about a year or so ago. Make a thousand bets a year. It's three and a half, you know, with the, with the All Star break, just that's three and a half games a day. So the, the sharps or wise guys, I still don't know what they are. I, I honestly, I fucking worked in Vegas, I lived in Vegas, father of bookmaker. Um, been doing in this business my whole life. Um, still can't identify a sharper square. Do they wear hats? Do they wear like certain kind of sneakers? I, I don't know. Well, anyway, um, if you make a thousand bets in the course of the year, okay. And let's just say if you're a, you're a wise guy, you're, you know you're 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 a hitter, you're you're, you're sharp. You bet a thousand dollars a game. That would seem right, right? A guy who's supposedly in the know betting a thousand dollars a game. Um, so he so he he, make, he he bets every day and um, he makes a thousand bets. He wins five hundred and forty bets. He loses four sixty. He's a fifty four percent handicapper. People say I could retire if I could win fifty four percent of my games because I got that number fifty four percent. Oh, I'm a winner. Okay, so a guy wins fifty four percent, bets a thousand games, three and a half games, you know, a day. He's probably putting one point three nine million at risk in the course of a year. I know that's not at once, but it's it is a fact. So if he wins 54, 540, and loses 460, that $1,000 better 
has profited $71,000. So it was at $71,200, something like that. It's not bad money. That's good money. But I know guys who are bartenders that make $71,000 a year. That doesn't make somebody a professional better, and he still has to win 54% of his games. So I, I, I'm using that high number because the person that's watching this video probably isn't betting $1,000 a game. So that person maybe is betting $100 a game. So, so his net profit is what? $7,000. $7,000 a year. It's okay. But that's what this is about. That's, that's reality. Recreational. The, the, the guys that are betting, okay, you're, you're either betting that 1000 or 2000 a game and saying, you know, I could live on 140 or if you bet 2070 uh, or 140000 a year, I'm fine with that. Um, but for the most part, most of you guys have jobs and girls, you know, you, you have jobs. And there's not a person that I've talked to that, and everybody will say, will agree to this. If you can bet sports all year long, football, baseball, basketball, hockey, whatever, stay in action all year long, never dip into junior savings account, never whack a credit card. You have a good week, you pick up some money, maybe a bad week, doesn't hurt you. It's all about playing some ball making a little bit of money and having some fun. And, and, and I say that to all my guys, you know, like, like people sit there and say, well, you, you, you have a, a, a handicapping service. It, it's not really a handicapping service. I'm damage control. What I do is damage control. My emails, I'm like a fucking life coach when it comes to sports, okay? Because if I didn't say the things that I'm saying now to my people, they'd be fucking done. You know, I've had bad weeks. I ain't, I am busted. I've been in this racket now 29 years. 29 years. And I must be doing something right. I'm not the greatest handicapper in the world. I mean, you know, I'm not. I don't have fancy taglines. You know, what people have to understand is that it's about having some fun and playing ball. And if you can make a little money doing it, I always use this expression, you know, it's not what you win, it's what you save. And, you know, I had a guy, you know, years ago say, I paid you $8,000 for your picks. And at the end of the year, I won 12. That means you got eight and I got four. Never forget the guy's name. I said, Raymond, let me ask you a question. Have you done prior to talking to me? So I lost like 150 grand last year, like 60 the year before. I never win. And he's like, in the one year I win, fucking you make more than me. Okay, so I didn't make you four. I saved you 150. Because when I was playing, when you first called me, what did you say? You love making three team parlays. You love betting horses. You love doing this. You, you can't survive doing it. You, you just can't. So, so we'll go back to the, the Vegas guy, the, the 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 wise guy, the sharp guy, the you know whatever. You know, I listened to this guy. Uh, this, was it Chad Millman from ESPN? And this motherfucker, he's like infatuated with. Uh, I talked to my sharps. I talked to the sports book manager. Trust me. Sportsbook managers know shit about who's going to win and lose games. I've had them ask me who they liked. Um, the public money. What is public money? The other uh, two weeks ago, Louisville played uh, Rutgers. Line opened up at 17. I bet early. They caught me on that one. They don't catch me often. I took 17. In the email I sent to my guys, I said I would have took 14 and a half. The line shoots to 20 and a half. So everybody's saying, there's steam in Louisville. All the sports books are like, oh, we're getting all this fucking sharp money on Louisville. Well, now the guys that are betting the game, they're saying, well, oh, it seems like the sharps are on Louisville. It's a blowout. And it's still under 21, so let me do it. Well, fuck, they didn't cover. So you, you, you have, there, there's power in numbers. People say, well, if, if the pros are betting them, the sharps are betting them, the wise guys are betting them, it must be the right side. Well, it wasn't, and I'm not saying it's always that way, but it's it's not the case. We we all want to believe that there's a guy behind the curtain in the land of Oz that knows all, that's going to make everybody all kinds of money. Yeah, there are betting syndicates. You know, when I say betting syndicates, I mean people that you know pull money and you know bet certain games. They don't all win. Some of them do. I, I, I'm friends with the vice president of Caesars. We talked one day about card accounting. He said to me, 
We won't throw anybody out for card counting. You know why? Most of them don't know how to do it. For the 1% who do, 99 try, and they, and, and they don't make money. Evens out. Better for us. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, if you're a pro, you ain't going to last long. But their, their thing is they make more money on people attempting to try it. So, so a lot of a lot of the stuff that I'm saying to you is like when I say better begin exactly the same. I've had weeks where, you know, I'm on a hot streak. Sunday comes in, guys. I don't like the NFL this weekend. You know, we had a good Thursday, good Friday, good Saturday. Let's take Sunday off. I can take the kids to the park, have a good day, fuck football, go back on Monday. I'll show a profit for the week. A lot of guys play with locals their weekend Sunday. Get paid. Take the kids out. Buy something for yourself. Um. A lot of people get upset. Hey, run a roll. We're playing with the man's money. It's your money. You want it. It's your money. Stuck money. I have bad Thursday, bad Friday, bad Saturday. Sunday comes. Guys, I'm going to take off. You fucking joking? I pay you money to take NFL football Sunday off? Well, yeah. Why? Everything I'm doing is wrong. Guys are blocking punts for touchdowns. Balls are going off of guys' heads. I'm losing every game. No matter what I do is wrong, and that's just the way it is. You all know it. No matter how good or everything runs in cycles. You know it. No matter what you do sometimes and you touch it, you can't lose. No matter what you do sometimes and you touch it, you can't win. So I'm from the belief that if it's running that bad, take a couple days off, recuperate, throw some water on your face, spend some time with the family, jump on a plane, go to Toledo, do something. That's just me. Um, but you see, I'm the, I'm usually the villain in the in, in the handicapping industry because I tell the truth. I tell you, I I I don't have the uh, crazy. This is why you should bet it. This is the triple dime game. This is the three star Twitter lock of the month. It just doesn't exist. So I want somebody to tell me who, who what is a sharp player and what is a wise guy. Or what, the wise eyes comes in pairs of twos, or they come in fours, or they come in packs of five. Is it like Noah's Ark? There's like two of each, like two blacks, two Chinese, two yeah, two two Indians. I mean, what is a wise guy? The man that knows all. And uh, where do they exist? And if they oh, another thing about that, you, you hear people say this was the line moved based on square money. How do you know? How do they know? It's the old adage. Oh, you know, a drunk come, rolls off the dice table, a whale, and bets 10000 Notre Dame because he's a Notre Dame fan. Who says? Who knows? Nobody knows. N nobody knows. The bottom line in this is real simple. If you're a favorite better, you bet that early line the second it comes out. If you like overs, bet over as early as you can. If you like dogs, Wait to the last second. If you like, uh, if you like um, unders, uh, wait to the last second. Because generally, everybody likes to bet the the favorites and the overs. And and, and again, it's going to sound like it's a public thing, but we're all the public. I'm telling you, I'm public. I am public. Everybody is. You know, people that do this, you, we hear Billy Walters' name. You know, Billy Walters. Again, he's the guy no one knows much about behind the curtain. Does that one interview on 60 Minutes, and it's like, he's the man. He's the man. Billy Walters makes money. Billy Walters loses money. In the end, Billy Walters makes money. But think of the overhead. He's got about five or six guys. He's got to be paying at least 500000 a week to move for him. Has to. Um... That's a lot of juice to overcome. For a guy that people are saying is the master of plus even, saving money on juice and saving juice and getting even money at minus two and plus three, he's paying a lot of juice to, you know, to get bets down if what, everything, what everybody says is true. So, but no one talks about that. Everybody just talks about the legend, the myth, the, you know, whatever story they want to come up with about him. Billy didn't make his money betting sports. Billy made his money in other ventures. He's now just, this is what he loves doing, and that's what he does. So, and he's good at it. I mean, I'm not going to deny it. Um, but, I mean, a, a lot of the stuff I'm addressing, so, so, so you people 
could, could kind of understand. I mean, you know, I hear a lot of, you know, I, I bought this pick and, you know, the, the game was, the game was, uh, you know, 20 points. Yeah, I bet an under and it went over by 20 points. That happens. I mean, you know, but I, I, I again, it's the reason why I, I, I decided not to, to take my, take what I do to Don Best on a daily basis. I don't think anybody can win one game. I don't think you can handicap one game. I, I don't know the, the point of it. Other than the fact that if you win it, you can spin it. You know, hey, I just won this game. I got the bigger game. Well, that's pretty much being a motherfucker as far as I'm concerned. I know, look, most of my friends do it. They're motherfuckers, but I like them. That, that's just the way it is. I choose not to do it. Um, I, 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 I try to... I, I try to distance myself from a lot of that kind of nonsense uh, because I don't need the headache. I get enough fucking headaches now, and you can't be more honest than I am. I mean, I, I tell it the way it is. I show my face here every day. So I, I guess what, what I'm trying to tell you guys is don't outthink yourself. Don't, don't chase bad lines. Don't believe in... The sharps are on this. The wise guys are on this. I'm fading this. I'm fading that. I hear that too. I fade that guy. Fuck, you got the same chance of that guy getting hot as, as him getting being cold. Um, the key is this. Eliminate your bets. The parlays. The, the, I always call it the hidden juice. I've, I, did, I did something on this before. The, the, the numbers I mentioned about the guy that bets a thousand a game, making seventy one thousand a year, living in Las Vegas, betting sports at a dime a game. He goes to the bar to catch. He goes to the sports book to catch his ticket. He sits down, gets a beer with his drink coupon, puts a twenty dollar bill in the in the video poker machine, loses it, watches the little game, puts it in another twenty, picks up his car at valet, gives the guy a five dollar tip. That's forty five dollars hidden juice, all coming off the bottom line. Uh, maybe goes out to eat. Generally, people, human nature, when they win money, they go out and spend money unnecessarily, buying foolish things, hidden juice. People don't realize it. Don't tell me anybody that's watching this has not had a good week, won money, collected money, and bought something they didn't even fucking need. We all do it. I do it. I fucking do it too. We all do it. So when somebody's when you get these math guys that say, oh, it's this, you know, you can win X amount of dollars here and this. There is so much money that's hidden, that's being extracted from your bottom line when you do foolish things. It, it's just, but it's human nature. Like I said, we all have gamble in us. We all do. It's just controlling it to a point where we can get a better edge playing, surviving, being in the game. You can never make a big score if you're out of the game. And, and lastly, it's, it's like you always hear, oh, sucker bets, whatever. And I mentioned this on occasion before. Biggest sucker bet you could possibly make. And I'm a dice player. I wouldn't lose a lot of money shooting dice. I like it because it's a game that, you know, you get lucky, you could win some money. If you lose, you get fucking hammered. But I can put, I can go to Caesars and bet $10,000 on a pass line on, on, on a dice table and take 50,000 odds at five times odds on a six or an eight. Um, they don't blink. You know why? No edge. No edge. You know, true odds. If I go to the same hotel and say I want to bet ten thousand on Snake Eyes, they're going to pay me thirty to one odds on a thirty-six to one proposition, a stone sucker bet. They won't take the bet. I think the max they'll take is maybe six hundred bucks, maybe a thousand tops. Thousand. You know why? What if it hits? But the odds are so highly against it until it hits. So, so why do you think you can't go to the roulette wheel and put ten thousand dollars on number two? But yet you can bet the black or an even or 1 to 18 or 1936, 50-50 proposition. Books will do that. Casinos will do that. Books in, in, in casinos want to know that if their exposure to a player is going to be about 50000 that motherfucker better have 50000 to give us. Nobody wants to book a bet. Or no casino wants to take a guy with a pair of balls and a $50 bill that walks in there and says, I don't care. Those are the most dangerous people in the world. They call them desperados. They're the most feared people that the casinos have. You know why? There's no upside to them. They don't want them. Guy goes in there, takes 50 bucks, makes a five-team parlay. Baseball dogs, money line, doesn't matter. He hits it. Okay, now this guy could be sitting on serious money. Hits the table, boom. Guy walks out of casino with thirty grand. Seen it many times. 
What could the casino have made? 50 bucks. What did it cost them? 30. Ceiling, unlimited. Uh, unlimited. That's the key to sports betting is we know there's no ceiling. You could just keep winning and winning and winning. And we, as bettors, eliminate you know, we just want to keep going and going and going as high as we can because we can win as much as we want. We go and lose what's in our pocket or what we have available. So that's that's what makes us as 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 gamblers um, be not successful at a lot of times because we're trying to chase something that's hard to catch. You know what I mean? It's hard to catch. Point of this is, is real simple. Uh, stay within your means. If you struggle on your own and you seek help from, you know, an internet handicapper, a known handicapper, a guy you're telling on Twitter, uh, and he's doing well for it, that's fine. You know, um, whatever is working for you, do it. But be smart about it. Same amount of money on every game. Don't get silly. Rome wasn't built in a day. But it sure as fuck was destroyed in one. Okay? So, guys, these are just things that I'm trying to help and bring along to you. Okay? I am not sitting here saying, Hey, did you see my monthly program for October? You know how much money I'm going to fucking make you? Hey, look. Guys that are on this program for October, they might win money. They might not. Uh, guys that are on the program for a year will do okay if they follow exactly what's on this video so my job is to just do the best I can to get people on the right side of games to get people on, on, the, on the high percentage plays and then after that cross your fingers if you can find somebody that honest give me their number I'll, I'll fucking talk to them because no one's gonna say that it's it's, it's my, I, I did a I did a test on one of my videos at Don Best and I looked at it and one of the videos where I was getting really crazy you know sell you know how I get crazy I was like um, I want you to take your hand squeeze your balls this game ain't gonna fucking lose they win this game by five touchdowns that game will get bet more based on what I say where if I went on and did a Don Best or did a, a video on the forum and said you know, guys, I mean, I really think Miami's the side today. You know, lay eight and a half. You know, I think they beat North Carolina um, on defense, ATS, uh, this. On offense, you know, they give up this amount over the last 10 years, this. And I just give, you might bet it, but not more than if I sat there and fucking hyped it and screamed it and said, you know. And, and I do it for fun, but I don't. it's not better than any other play. It, it's just, um, it, it's, it's just an odd it's an odd business we're in. It's, it's an odd habit we have, you know. Uh, I'm going to close with this. This is like a guy that, that, you know, maybe has an alcohol problem. Every time he drinks, he gets arrested or goes to, he, he goes to, he goes to jail or he gets himself in some kind of fucking trouble. But he likes to drink. He likes beer. Somebody walks up to that guy and says, here's the deal. You can drink every night. I'm going to be your beer coach. And, but here's the deal. After a certain amount of beers, we're going to stop and I'm going to get you home. Can you do it? You can either do one or the other. You can just wind up in jail, or you can still have your fun. The guy's got to look at it and say, well, he's not taking it away from me. So I get to still have my beer. I get to still have a little fun. I get the buzz without getting obliv uh, obliviated. So that's kind of like what I do. I mean, I kind of let me make sure people have their buzz, stay in, get in action, give them some chances of winning. What without having to raise a white flag and say, wow, what just happened to me? But not many people will do that. And, and, and a lot of gamblers have a lot of pride and have a lot of, um, they have a lot of, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, competitiveness. And being competitive and being a gambler is, is fucking ammonia and fucking bleach. Don't mix. You know, because it, it, it becomes not about the money. It becomes more about... I just want to show that I can't lose another fucking game. I don't care what it costs me. I've done it. I fucking lost a half a million dollars in Lake Dollar doing it. I'm telling you. You know, I, there's no way I'm going to lose 15 hands in a row in blackjack where the smart thing to do is, is, is after three or four hands, get up and leave. So what I'm saying to you, I'm not better or worse than anybody. I've fell into the same traps, and I do at times fall into the same pitfalls of gambling that everybody else does. 
I'm a lot smarter than I am, you know, than I was. And I caught myself. I catch myself at times, but you slip up. And I'm man enough to admit it. Not too many people are. Everybody's the genius, the sharp, the wise guy who still, I don't know what they are, who they are, where they are, what they eat, what they like, what they drink, who they fuck. I don't know. Anyway, on that note, just a little kind of me talking my philosophy on gamble to you guys. I know it's long, it's looks like it's 25 minutes, but I hope it helps. If it doesn't, then I waste 25 minutes, I can't get back. All right, hope to see you all, sportsforumpicks.com, www.sportsforumpicks.com. This is the Facts Man. I'll be able to get some more insight from me as the holidays come through with bowl games, college basketball, all kinds of sports, and um, have a great day.